Hallelujah. Well, we thank God for waking us up this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. If you have any testimonies or praise reports, let us know. Also, make sure you make this declaration. Make sure you make this declaration. I have an appointment with Breakthrough. Hallelujah. Good morning, Sue. Blessings to you and your family. Pray that you're doing well. Blessings. Thank you, mighty God. We're going to John chapter 6 this morning. John chapter 6. How you doing, Sue? Blessings. Show me your glory and your power. And show me your power. Last me more of you is what I need. Felicia, you have an appointment with Breakthrough. Sue, you have an appointment with Breakthrough. The author, you have an appointment with Breakthrough. James, you have an appointment with Breakthrough. Evangelist Bryant, you have an appointment with Breakthrough. Tina, Tempest, Timber, Thou, Willie, you have an appointment with Breakthrough. Jennifer, Lisa, Lois, you have an appointment with Breakthrough. Terrell, you have an appointment with Breakthrough. Tasha, Wendy, Kadia, Kiana, Hallelujah. Danielle, Alexis, Tammy, you have an appointment with Breakthrough. Michelle, Sonia, Tish, oh God, we thank you. Good morning, Tasha. Blessings to see you. Ooh. My God, show me your glory. Good, good, Felicia. I have an appointment with Breakthrough. I agree with you. Hallelujah. Ooh, my God. Show me your glory, Lord. My God. Have your way, Father. We will stand... And see this great thing which you shall do before our eyes. First Samuel twelve sixteen. Hallelujah. Oh Father, we need your glory. Show us your glory. Less of us, all of you. That's what we need. Well, good morning, everyone. Blessings to you. We pray God's best over your life. I pray First Samuel 12 and 16, stand still and see the great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Lord, we stand on that word that you will do a great thing right before our eyes in spite of how it looks, in spite of how we feel. We thank you that you shall do a great thing and you will get the glory. So, Lord, we thank you that every delay works in our favor. We thank you that what we are presently going through, it is working together for our good. We thank you that our expectation is only in you. You are our only source. Everything else is a resource. We ask you to keep us focused on you. The scripture said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from with cometh my help, all of my help comes from 
the hallelujah. Let's go this morning to John chapter 6. John chapter 6, please. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Let's go to John chapter number 6. John chapter number 6. And we'll start. Uh, we'll start uh, at verse 17. John 6 and 17. John chapter 6, verse 17. And entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus, thank you, walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship. And they were afraid. But he said unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whether they went. My God. Write these words down, uh, please. Write down the word dark. Verse 17, and it was now dark. Write that word down. It was now dark. Dark, D-A-R-K, good, it was dark, okay. Verse 18, a great wind, write that down, a great wind. Verse 17, dark, verse 18, a great wind. Verse 19, write down the word road, R-O-W-E-D. Verse 17, dark. Verse 18, a great wind. Verse 19, road, R-O-W-E-D. Okay. Also in verse 19, thank you, Tasha. Verse 19, put the word afraid. Verse 17, the word dark. Verse 18, a great wind. Verse 19, road. Verse 19, afraid. God bless you, Jackie. All right, so we're in John chapter number 6, starting at verse number 17. I want you to write down the word dark. It was now dark. Verse 18, a great wind blew. Okay. Verse 19, when they had rowed, R-O-W-E-D, and then verse 19, they were afraid. Notice now their situation because somebody this morning finds themselves and a familiar situation as these disciples was. Somebody is in a dark season. Somebody feels like things are against them. It wasn't just a wind. It was a great wind that blew. Okay. So you're not just going through a regular situation this is an overwhelming situation. Not only that, the Bible said they were rowing. So not only was it a dark situation, 
not only did it feel like things and so many things were against them, but they were struggling. They were struggling. Somebody is struggling in the midst of what they're going through. It's a dark time and things are against them. And lastly, they are afraid. If you find yourself in any of these situations, I want you to hear what the Lord said to the disciples. And also, I want you to hear what happened because your situation doesn't have to end like it is. My God, there is hope even in what we are going through. It was dark. Jesus was now come to them. The sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So they rowed about five to 20 or 30 furlongs. They see Jesus walking on the sea, drawing nigh unto them, and they were afraid. They did not know what was going to happen. All they know, all they knew is what is that it was dark. They couldn't see that far. Everything seemed like it was closing in and the wind was blowing against them and they were afraid. Watch what Jesus says. But he says, verse 21, unto them, it is I, be not afraid. The first thing I want to encourage you with this morning is, the Lord is with you, be not afraid. You may not be able to trace him, but the Lord is with you. Don't focus on what's against you. Don't focus on who's not with you. Don't focus on who walked out. Don't focus on who won't help you. The Lord said to them, it is I. In other words, I'm here. Be not afraid. His presence alone makes the difference. And we're in a time that we must know the greatest promise in the word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you always. To me, that is the greatest promise in the Bible, that he will never leave me nor forsake me, that he'll be with me until the end. Why is that so important? Because no matter what I go through, if I know that he is there, that makes the difference. No matter what I go through, if I know he is present, I can make it. Because it's during a dark season, it's during when things are against me, it's when I'm struggling that the enemy's trying to convince me that not only people are not there, but God is not there. And I want to encourage you, encourage myself, that you need to know he is a very present help in the time of trouble. Come on, somebody declare the Lord is with me. Come on, declare that the Lord is with me. Come on. Declare that you've got to know that the Lord is with me. Good morning, Lisa. Blessings to you. I waited for your call. Good morning. Blessings to you. We're in John chapter number six. You've got to know when you're in a dark season, you've got to know the Lord is with you. When you're in and feel like things are against you, you've got to know the Lord is with you. When you are struggling to make it, you've got to know that the Lord is with you. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. And many times we fail to look to him because we're focused on what's going on around us. We're focused on who's not there. And yet we disrespect him because he's present. He's right there. So it doesn't matter who's not there. He is there. And if I can recognize that the Lord is there, everything will be all right. If I can recognize that the Lord is there, I can make it through any situation or circumstance. Hallelujah. 
All right. I wanted you to see that. Now watch. Jesus says to them, uh, it is I, be not afraid. Those of you just coming on, we're in John chapter 6, verse 20. He said unto them, it is I, be not afraid. Now watch what happens. Verse 21, then they willingly received him into the ship. Come on. Say, Lord, I invite you into this situation. Come on, right where you are. Lord, I invite you into this situation. That's all I want you to do. All I want you to do. Don't tell them what you're going through. Don't complain. Just say, Lord, I invite you into this situation. Come on. He already knows what you're going through. He already sees what you're going through. But he wants you to invite him into the situation. Hallelujah. No problem. Good. 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 Notice what it said. John 6, 21. Then they willingly received him. Come on. Then they willingly received him. Good morning, Dina. Blessings to you and your family. We're in John chapter 6, verse 21 now. God bless you, Sister Stringer. Blessings. Okay. Come on. Right where you are, say, Lord, I invite you into this situation, whatever it is. It may be with your children. It may be with your spouse. It may be in your finances. It may be in your workplace. Lord, I invite you into this situation. I don't know what your this is, but I want you to invite him into your situation. Many times we are complaining about what we're going through. Many times we are frustrated over what we're going through. Many times we talk about what we're going through, but we fail to invite him into the situation. We're in John chapter 6, verse 17. It was dark. The disciples couldn't see. It was windy. The wind was blowing against them. They were rowing. They were struggling to make it to the other side. They were afraid. Jesus shows up coming to them. He says, it is I, be not afraid. And then the Bible said, verse 21, then they willingly received him into the ship. Now watch what happened. They invited him into the ship. Watch this. Hallelujah. They invited him. Good. They invited him into the ship. Watch what happens. And immediately the ship was at the land whether they went. In other words, they were in the middle of the sea, struggling, storm, wind blowing. And soon as they invited him into the ship, they were at the shore. Did you see that? When he stepped into the situation, they were where they needed to be. And now that you have invited him into the situation, watch God work. Come on, watch God work. Write this down. I'm going to watch God work. My God, soon as he stepped in, my God, the Bible said immediately the ship was at the land. My God, how can you get from the middle of the sea, wind blowing against you, it's dark, you're afraid, but soon as Jesus stepped on board, my God, they were at the land. I'm telling you that when you allow him to get in your situation, when you willingly invite him in there, my God, you'll see he'll make the difference. He'll make the difference. The Bible said immediately the ship was at the land, whether they went. Hallelujah. That's what I want to encourage you to do this morning. Invite him into your situation. And they willingly received him into the ship. They willingly. Believe it or not, the Lord has showed me plenty of times. He said, Michael, 
how come you haven't asked me? How come you haven't invited me? Because if the truth be told, we'll try everything, we'll try everyone, and then we'll get frustrated when it doesn't work, and we have bypassed the Lord. So this morning, I want you to willingly invite him into your situation. Good morning, Tony. Blessings to you. I want you to willingly invite him into your situation. Good morning, Wendy. Blessings to you. Blessings. We're in John chapter 6. We're talking about inviting the Lord into our situations. Inviting the Lord into our situations. This morning, the Lord uh, wants to encourage us. Somebody is in a dark place. Somebody feels like everything is against them. Somebody is struggling to make it. And the Lord wants you to know, I am with you. I am with you. My God, I am with you. I am with you. Four things you must know. Four things you must know when you're going through a dark place. Four things you must know when things are against you. Four things you must know. When you feel like you're struggling. Four things. Write this down. Four things you've got to know. Four things you've got to know. Number one, God is good. Write that down. Four things you must know when you're going through a storm, going through a dark place, struggling to make it, feel like everything is against you. Four things you must know. Number one, you must know God is good. Number two, you must know God is with you. Number three, you must know God is for you. And number four, you must know God is in you. Number one, you must know God is good. Hallelujah. Just don't say it. See, we have, oh, God is good. No, no. You've got to know that. You've got to know that God is good. And you've got to know that no matter where you find yourself, God is working on your behalf. No matter what it looks like, you've got to know it's going to work out for your good. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Okay. Not he will be good. He's good in spite of your present situation. Come on, somebody declare that. God is good. He is good in spite of your present situation. Come on. Yeah, good. You've got to know God is good. You've got to know God is with you. You've got to know God is for you. And you've got to know God is in you. Good. Four things. When you're in a dark place, when things are coming against you, when you're struggling to make it, you've got to know four things. Number one, God is good. It can't be a cliche. You've got to know it. In spite of what I'm going through, God is good. I may be crying, but God is good. I may have pain in my body, but God is good. I may feel alone, but God is good. God is good. Number one, then God is with you. And not only is he with me, but he is for me. My God, what good is it for him to be with you and he not be for you? So not only is he with me, but he is for me. And then lastly, he is in me. My God. So guess what? Because he's in me, counsel is available to me. Because he's in me, wisdom is is available to me. Because he's in me, power is available to me. Because he's in me, joy is available to me. You've got to know this. We act like everything is going to fall apart. We act like all hope is gone. Good morning, Sonia. Blessings to you and your family. But you've got to know these four things. Number one, God is good. 
in spite of what I'm going through, God is good. I may not understand, but God is good. Number two, God is with me. Number three, God is for me. Okay? Stop talking about who's not with you. Stop talking about who won't help you. God is for me. And if God be for you, who can be against you? We really don't believe that. Because you listen to people talk, all they talk about is who is against them. All they talk about is their haters. All they talk about who won't help. But the Bible said, if God be for you, who can be against you? Focus on God is for me. Come on, somebody declare that God is for me. Hallelujah. Who better to have in your corner than God? Who better to have on your team than God? Who better to have on your side than God? My God, because he can touch the heart of others. He can cause people to help you. My God is for me. Hallelujah. I know that God is for me. He will not forsake me. Yes, Lord, my God. He will not leave me. You've got to know that, my God. God is for you, Tasha. God is for you, Sonia. God is for you, Lisa. God is for you, Sister Stringer. God is for you, Michael Bryant. God is for you, Wendy. And he will not forsake you. He will not leave you. He will not abandon you. I don't care what it feels like. I don't care how it seems. God is for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's a scripture. Here's a scripture. Not only do you need to know those four things, but you need to read and memorize this scripture. Psalms 34, 19. Write that down. Psalms 34, 19. First of all, you got to know four things. God is good. God is with me. God is for me. God is in me. God is good, God is with me, for me, and in me. And this is a scripture I want you to memorize. This is a scripture I want you to memorize. Psalms 34, 19. Good morning, Evangelist Bryant. Psalms 34, 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of of them all. I want you to memorize that. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you see that, Wendy? God bless you, Kiana. Did you see that? Many are the afflictions. Good morning, Val. We're in Psalms 34, 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But, so it's letting you know, just because you're righteous, don't mean you won't be afflicted. Do you see that? Just because you're righteous doesn't mean you won't be afflicted. I think we think because we serve God, we're not going to go through. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. So even though I'm serving God, even though I'm living for God, that doesn't mean I'm exempt from problems. That doesn't mean I'm exempt from trials. But then he says, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Yes, I'm going to go through, but yes, I'm coming out. How come you can only see that you're going through, but you can't see that you're coming out? You can't receive one part of the verse and not the other part of the verse. If you know that you're going through, you also got to know that you're coming out. My God, the verse doesn't only tell you that you're going to go through. The verse tells you that you are coming out. My God, can you rejoice Lord have mercy. I don't hear people say, I'm coming out of this. I do hear them say, you don't know what I'm going through. I can't hardly make it. 
This is against me. That is against. Well, if you can see that you're going through, don't just claim the first part of the verse. Claim the second part. Claim the whole verse. Lord, I thank you that I may be going through, but I thank you that you have promised me I'm coming out. I can be assured that I'm coming out because just like you told me many are the afflictions of the righteous, you're teaching me that just because I'm righteous, I'm not exempt, but you also promise me that you will deliver me out of it. My God, I may not know when, I may not know how, but I'm coming out of this. God shall deliver me out of this. Come on. Yes, Lord. Come on, make that declaration. God shall deliver me out of this. Come on, make that declaration. God shall deliver me out of this. Not my friends, not people, but God shall deliver me out of this. Come on, God shall, good vow, God shall, God shall. Come on, come on, because people will fail you. Come on. People are limited. Don't put that pressure on people. God shall deliver me out of this. Good Sue. Good Tony. Good Lisa. Good Sonia. Good Wendy. Good Kiana. Good Val. Good Tasha. God shall deliver me out of this. Stop putting that pressure on people. Stop putting that pressure on people who are limited. Stop, good advances, Brian. Stop putting that pressure on people who are finite. Put it on God. He is your burden bearer. Put it on God. God doesn't mind you putting it on him. My God, why? Because it's no pressure. My God, it's a, it, it's a small thing to God. The Bible says, but the Lord deliver him out of them all. Hallelujah. My God. God, I thank you. 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 Go up. Go up real quick. Uh, that was verse 19. Now go up to 17. That's okay. Good. Go to verse 17. Just go up two more verses. The righteous cry, yes, Lord, and the Lord heareth and delivers them out of all their troubles. Come on. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. I cried, the Lord heard me, he delivered me. Come on, write that down. I cried, the Lord heard me, he delivered me. Come on. I cried, the Lord heard me, he delivered me. I cried, he heard me, he delivered me. My God, let that ring in your spirit. I cried, he heard me, he delivered me. I cried, he heard me, he delivered me. I cried, he heard me, he delivered me. Lord have mercy. I cried, he heard me, he delivered me. Hallelujah. Always remember, hallelujah. Write this down. Don't judge God in a moment of time. Write that down. I cried, he heard me, good, he delivered me. Write that down. Don't judge God in a moment of time, okay? Don't judge God in a moment of time. Now, because you can't see your way out because things are difficult, now you're judging God in a moment of time. When you got history with God, when God has brought you out before, when God has showed himself mighty on your behalf. Don't judge God in a moment of time. Don't judge God in a weak time, a weak moment. Judge him based on his character. Don't judge him 
based on that moment. Don't judge him based on that moment. Good, there you go. Come on, come on. Tell yourself, I have history with God. Come on, tell yourself, I have history with God. Sue, you have history with God. And if he did it before, he'll do it again. You have history with God, Kiana. He brought you out before, he brought you out again. My God, Sonia, you have history with God. Wendy, you have history with God. You have history with God. He's been faithful. He's done it before. My God, this is just a different situation. My God, the same issue, but a different situation. This is not the first time you need it resources. This is not the first time you needed money. This is not the first time you needed a way out. This is not the first time you needed provision. My God, it's just more money. It's just a different situation. And if he did it before, he'll do it again. If he brought you out, my God, now reach back and grab a hold of your history with God and remind the devil, remind everything seen and unseen that God brought me out before and he'll bring me out again. Remind yourself, David said I was young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah. When you live long enough, write this down, write this down. Life can be lived forward, but understood backwards. Write that down. Life can be lived forward, Lisa, but understood backwards. If you live long enough, you're going to find out life can be lived forward, Kiana, but understood backwards, okay? Bless you, Kadir. Blessings to you and your family. Good, Wendy. Life can be lived forward, but understood backwards. How many times, Lisa, have we went through things and to get through it, while we were in it, Evangelist Bryant, we thought it was tragic. We thought it was tragedy, but only to get through it and look back. And what we thought was tragedy was really a transition. What we thought was against us really worked for us. Life is lived forward, Sonia, but is understood backwards. It's not until you get on the other side that you realize Things are not as bad as it first seems. When you first go through it, when you first encounter it, you feel overwhelmed, but only to get to the other side, looking back, you understand it better. That what I thought was against me, what I thought was my weakest, became my strength. I found out that when I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. I found out that God is faithful to his word. Hallelujah. I was watching, Sister Stringer, I was watching uh, this painter paint on a canvas, Wendy. And he was painting, but... uh. The canvas was upside down. And so I'm looking, I'm like, man. So I was about to turn the station. I was about to turn the channel, Lisa. And all of a sudden, the painter flipped the painting. He flipped it upside down. And he flipped it right side up. And when he flipped it right side up, it made sense. And some of you, your life feels like it's upside down. And you don't know that God's about to flip the script. And when he flips the script, you're going to understand 
when he flips the script, you're going to be able to see what God is doing. When that painter turned the picture around, then it all made sense. How many of us have walked through life only to think that our lives were upside down and all of a sudden God flipped it. And when God flipped it, it made sense. Then you said, I had to go through this. This was necessary. The very thing you wanted God to bring you out of, now looking back, you realize it was necessary. Come on, somebody say, I had to go through this. This was necessary. I didn't understand it when I was going through it, but this is necessary. My God, because God wanted to show me something. My God, God wanted to teach me something. My God, God wanted to show me me in this situation. It was necessary. I had to go through it. Sometimes God will allow you to go through something to show you. This is why I told you don't connect with them. This is why I told you don't be with them. And God will show you. See, you don't want God to show you why he told you don't do it. The best thing to do is to obey him. But if he has to show you why, and then guess what? After you come through it, you're going to be like, oh, that's why. That's why he was saying that. Okay? So don't be like the woman. Don't be like the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible said after she spent all she had, she was nothing better but worse. Now, she should have realized that she wasn't getting better. It shouldn't have took her losing everything to realize she's not getting better. That's a word for somebody this morning. God is saying to us, by now, you should realize, come on, that things are not getting better. Come on, you've been praying, Lord, change this. You've been praying, Lord, change her. You've been praying, Lord, change him. And God is saying, do you realize by now things are not getting better? So when they're not changing, you've got to change. Come on, when your situation is not changing, you've got to change. You're looking at everything else changing, but God says you need to change. My God, you're praying for your situation to change. It hasn't. You're praying for them to change. They haven't. But God says, maybe I'm not trying to change them. Maybe I'm not trying to change your situation. Maybe I'm trying to change you. You ever thought about that? Hallelujah. You can see what everybody else is doing that's wrong. You can see the faults in everybody else. But can you see what I'm trying to show you in you? Maybe God wants to show you something in you. Hallelujah. My God. My God. Hallelujah. 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 That's powerful. That's powerful. That's powerful. That's powerful. My God. Hallelujah. Come on, tap that screen. If God is speaking to you this morning, I see that this is so on time. Very powerful. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let the Lord minister to you this morning. Receive what he's saying to you. My God. He's a deliverer. He's a way maker. Hallelujah. Show me your glory. Show me your power. 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 Hallelujah. Okay. Good God Almighty. 
Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Good, good. Excellent, 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 excellent. Okay. So you got to know. You got to know. And hold on to those scriptures. Okay. Hold on to Psalms 34, 19. Hold on to that. Hold on to that. Hold on to that. That many are the afflictions of the righteous. Okay. But the Lord shall deliver him out of them all. Okay. And, and I want you, write this down, capital letters. This is not the end. Write that down. This is not the end. I have a cousin who writes plays and uh, all over the country. Okay. And what I notice that the play has won more than one act. Okay, good. This is not the end. A play has more than one act. A play has one than more more than one act. Okay? And, and, and many times uh you have uh many acts to your life, and you find yourself in a dark situation, and you think it's the end. And you don't realize that it's only the first act. And the devil job is to convince you that it's all over. He wants to convince you it's over. Because he wants you to focus on how dark it is. When I went to one of his plays... After the first act, they closed the curtain. I did not know. I thought it was over, so I proceeded to leave. And the person who invited me said, where are you going? I said, I thought it was over. They said, no, that's only the first act. And they said, after every act, they close the curtain. Come on. Listen to me. Write that down. After every act, they close the curtain. Could it be that the curtain's closing is not signifying it's over? But could it be that when the curtains close... God is resetting the stage. My God, that is a prophetic word for somebody today. The curtains have closed in your life. It's not a sign that things are over, but God is resetting the stage. Come on, somebody put that in capital letters. God is resetting the stage. He is orchestrating things behind the curtain. You need to get excited. Things are being moved around. People are being moved around. My God, people are acting funny, but that's okay. It's because they're not in the next act of your life. My God, God is resetting the stage. And there are some people that was in the first act that won't be in the second act. There are some props that were in the first act. They won't be in the next act. God is resetting the stage. My God. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty. Your best days are ahead of you. God is resetting the stage. Your best days are ahead of you. My God, he is the great orchestrator. My God, he is pulling the strings. He is operating. My God, I know you hear a lot of noise. I know you hear a lot of going back and forth. That's because people are running off and new people are coming on the scene. 
New characters are getting into place. Write that down. Not only, hear me this morning, hear me. God is saying, tell the people, I am resetting the stage. Number one. Number two, God says, tell the people, new characters are getting in position. God, I love you. New characters are getting in position. Hallelujah. Boy, that's powerful. Thank you, Lord. My God, if you're receiving that, God says, I'm resetting the stage. Number one. Number two, new characters are getting into position. Yes, Lord. So don't think it's strange when you begin to hook up with new people. Hallelujah. Don't think it's strange when old people exit your life. Hallelujah. And some of you are trying to hold on to the old people. Some of you are trying to hold on to the old people. You prayed for God to remove them, and now God is removing them, and now you're trying to hold on. Let me say that again. You prayed for God to remove them, and now God is removing them, and you're still trying to hold on to them. Now, which one is it? Do you want them out of your life or in your life? Are you ready for a new act? Yes, Lord. Watch this. The Lord said, if you continue to hold on to the old people, you won't have a different act. You'll just replay the last act. Let me say that again. If you continue to hold on to the old people, you won't have a new act. You'll replay the old act. If the same people were going to be in the act, there would be no need to close the curtains. All you got to do is continue the performance. But the reason why they close the curtain, because new people are coming in. The reason why they close the curtain, the scene is going to change. Get ready. Your scene is about to change. My God, not only is God resetting the stage, not only are new characters getting in position, but God's about to change the scene. My God, thank you. My God, can I run? I feel somebody run for me. I said, God is about to change your scene. Your scenery, Kiana, is about to change. My God, some of you say, I'm tired of the same old thing. Well, God has heard you and your scene is about to change. Yes, Lord. Good God. Your scene is about to change. Thank you, Kiana. Thank you, Lisa. My God, your scene is about to change. God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the new location. Lord, I thank you for the new scenery. Lord, I thank you for things around me changing for the better. My best days are ahead of me. I thank you. Forgive me. I thought the curtains closing meant it was over. You closed the curtains to reset the stage. You closed the curtains so new characters could get in place. You closed the curtain so you could change the scenery. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is not a period. It's only a comma. Did you hear me? This is not a period, Dina. This is not a period, Dina. It's a comma. Write that down. This is not a period. It's a comma. Come on. This is not a period, it's a comma. A period says stop, the end. A comma says pause. Good God Almighty. Could it be that you think you're at a period and you're ready to stop when God is just saying pause? God says you've been through so much, I just want you to pause. This is not the end. I'm just giving you time to catch your breath. This is an intermission. Don't stop. Just pause. A period says stop. A comma says pause. Good God Almighty. Pause. Why? Because you're getting ready to go into the best days of your life. 
A comma says what? Pause, because there's something on the other side that's better than what you have come through. My God, come on, tap that screen. I got to go, but I feel good. Lord, I thank you for encouraging us. I thank you for reassuring us. I thank you for showing us this is not the end. It's just a pause. I'm just pausing because I'm about to go into a new act. I'm about to encounter new characters. I'm about to encounter a new stage. I'm about to encounter a new scenery. This is a new chapter. My God, come on, somebody say, I'm about to turn the page. I'm about to go into another chapter. I'm turning the page. My God, can you help me turn the page? My God, turn the page. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And guess what? Now, I've learned this. I've learned this. Some of you are frustrated. But Val, Wendy, Evangelist Bryant, Dina, Lisa, Tasha, the author, Sonia, Sister Stringer, Tony, you should be glad. Write this down, second half, capital letter, second half. Write that down, second half, capital letters. Always choose the second half. Always choose the second half. I hear the Lord saying that many of you have suffered. Many of you have messed up the first half. But God says, I'm going to bless you in your second half. The first half of your life was okay. The first half of your life, you made a lot of bad choices and decisions. But if God is going to bless you, Felicia, you always want him to bless you in the second half. My God. Always choose the second half. If God is going to bless you, always choose the first half. If you had to choose between the first half of your life and the second half, you better choose the second half. Why? Because in the second half of your life, my God, you are more mature. In the second half of your life, you have greater wisdom. In the second half of your life, you no more. Come on. Hallelujah. How many of you can truly say, my God, I'm glad he waited to the second half. I wasn't mature enough in the first half. My God, my God, if I got everything in the first half, I would have lost it. My God, I wasn't wise. I, I, I wasn't teachable in the first half, but I've been through enough my God, I've been through enough heartache. I've been through enough pain. I've been through enough suffering. Hallelujah. To know that I need the blessing in the second half. So Lord, I'm not upset. I'm not angry. I'm glad that you waited to the second half of my life. My God. And guess what? I'm about to have more fun than I ever had before. You are about to enjoy the best time of your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Guess what? And I come against that spirit that would tell you you're not going to be able to enjoy yourself because you're getting older. And I tell you by the Spirit of God. He renews your strength. Like the eagle. He renews your youth. Like the eagle. You are getting better. You are getting stronger. You are getting wiser. Make those confessions. I'm getting better. I'm getting stronger. I'm getting wiser. Make those confessions. I'm getting better. I'm getting stronger. I'm getting wiser. 
Come on, and I'm going to be able to enjoy these blessings the second half of my life. I'm going to enjoy these blessings the second half of my life. My health is better. Hallelujah. Come on. I'm going to be able to travel. I'm going to be able to do things with my children. I'm going to be able to experience things with my children. I'm not going downhill. My body is not breaking down. My mind is not breaking down. Devil, you are a liar. I have a sound mind. I'm going to enjoy. Hallelujah. I'm going to have fun. For once in my life, I'm going to smile. For once in my life, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm not going to wrap my life around taking care of children. I did that. Hallelujah. Now it's time for me to enjoy my life. I'm not going to feel guilty. Hallelujah. Because God, I put my children, I put my grandchildren in your hand. I'm going to enjoy my life. Hallelujah. I'm going to do things that I wanted to do. Get to know my spouse better. Hallelujah. Don't you know you can get married and start having children? You can get married and, and, and your life be so cluttered that you're not able to even enjoy your life. You're not even able to enjoy your spouse. My God, you're taking care of children. You're taking care of other people's children. You're working. Your spouse is working. And you don't even have time for yourself. But this is a pause. God has given you a pause. Because you're about to enjoy yourself. You're about to enjoy yourself. Like never before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And guess what? You have been working so hard. You have been trying to make everybody else's life better. That you have put your life on hold. Did you notice that? You put your life on hold trying to make everybody else's life better. Making sure they had this. Making sure they had that. And you put your life on hold. And guess what? The people you were helping took advantage of your kindness. You running here, running there, running here, running there, running here, running there, running there. And why did you get married? You didn't get married. You didn't get married to spend your whole life taking care of your children and grandchildren. You didn't get married to work, you and your spouse, and you never see each other. Some of you, hallelujah, write this down, things much must change. Write that down, things must change. Come on. Things must change. I'm about to enjoy my life to the fullest. I'm about to enjoy my life to the fullest. If you've been married 20 years, it's time to go on 20 trips with your spouse. If you've been married 40 years, it's time to go on 40 trips with your spouse. Come on. How can you be married all those years and you never do anything together? You never go anywhere together? Why? Because you're trying to make everybody else happy and you got together with that person and you made all these promises to them and you made all these commitments to them and yet both of you have allowed life to get in your way. You have allowed life to get in your way. And guess what? If you keep on doing that, you are going to be miserable. And guess what? Some of you have been married for years, but if the truth be told, you don't even know your spouse. 
Don't you ever get used to not doing things with your spouse. Don't you ever get used to being apart from your spouse. And if you're not careful, life can get in the middle and make a gap. Life can get in the middle and make a gap. And you think it's normal for them to be working and you to be working. And then you see each other once in a while. I didn't get married to be roommates. Don't you allow life to get in between you. Now you told everybody God put us together. You said that. Oh, God brought him in my life. So why don't you spend time with them? Why are you doing things that you say you're doing it for the betterment of your relationship? And guess what? If the truth be told, you really don't have a relationship. And the funny thing is, people are looking from the outside... And they really think that you have a strong marriage. But they don't realize that you don't even hardly spend time with each other. Because you're trying to take care of everybody else. That job is always going to be there. But your spouse may not. Life is so short that by the time we realize all these things, we are now full of regret because we're talking about what we should have did. Don't allow time to pass and all you end up with is a bunch of regrets. I wish we would have did this. I wish we would have did this. Enjoy your life. And don't feel guilty about it. Me and my wife, we spend 90% of our time together, and we're always doing things. We're always going places. Yeah. And it doesn't have to cost you. Go out to the park. Get in the car. Ride together. So you, you can get caught up in that. And you think it's normal. And then you justify it because they're working. And now you have accepted something as normal that is not normal. And now you don't even know your spouse. Now they don't even desire to be with you. They desire to spend more time away from you. Something's wrong with that. Something's wrong with that. It's not that much work in the world that you would want to spend time away from your mate. And then if you try to bring it up, they start talking about, well, I got to work. Da, da, da. Yeah, but there's a balance. And I pray that God give those of you who are married, that God give you a balance. That God give you a balance in your life. Okay, But I want you to enjoy your life. I want you to enjoy your mate. My wife, before I met her, whole, whole life was centered around her children, taking care of her children, making sure her children were good. And that was fine. But when we got married, I said, now it's going to be about you. Okay? So... I said, you don't have to cook. If you don't want to, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. Because I don't want your life to be surrounded about making everybody else happy. And then a lot of you are caregivers. And you don't even know it. Because all you do is try to make everybody else happy. But when you look around, you're not even happy. You're giving everybody else what they want. But who's giving you what you want? Okay. You're willing to stop. Kids need to go here. I'll take them. 
Oh, mom, can you take, I'll take them. I'll do this. I'll do, and you so quick to do all that. But then when your time comes, when your time comes, I'll get back to you. But guess what? You can control that. And don't feel guilty. Don't feel good. People don't feel guilty when they can't help you. Okay? But it's time for you to enjoy yourself. This year, do something you always wanted to do. Go somewhere you always wanted to go. Do it. Do it. Do it. Don't sit around, oh, I got to get, I got to make sure I, I get the money. Okay? You're always going to need more money. Okay? You're always going to need more money. Okay? All right. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I pray that today you were blessed by the scope. All right. Tap that screen if you were blessed. Tap that screen if you were empowered. Thank you so much for joining us. It's always our honor and our privilege to come on and to encourage you. It seems like the Lord shifted us this morning, but we receive it. We receive it. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. Thank you for loving us enough to tell us the truth. And I thank you for the new chapter. I thank you for the new scenery. I thank you for the new characters getting in position. I thank you for resetting the stage of our lives. Thank you that you have chosen the second half to bless us. We are wiser now. We are more mature now. Thank you, Lord. It, it wasn't that you missed it. God just saved it for the second half of your life. The second half is going to be the best half of your life, Lisa. The second half is going to be the best half of your life, Sonia. The second half is going to be the best half of your life, D. Arthur. The second half is going to be the best half of your life, Kadia, Kiana, Tasha, Wendy, Sue, Dina. The second half is going to be the best half of your life, Val. The second half is going to be the best half of your life, Tony, Felicia. My God. All right. If this message bless you today, I want you to sow a seed. I want you to sow a seed today. If you were blessed, I was blessed by this message. I know it was the Lord because we kind of shifted. We kind of shifted, but I just went with the shift. I went with the flow. But I want you, if you were blessed, I want you to sow a seed today. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support always. Have a fruitful day today. Have a victorious day today. Remember, do something to increase your value. Oh, excellent. Good. Do something to increase your value. Number two, keep seed in the ground. Number three, keep a joyful attitude. Number four, use your words to frame your world. Write down this date, uh, Fe February 13th, please. February 13th, write down that date, February 13th. Uh, Evangelist Bryant will be on CTN. She will be taping her broadcast with her book, Set Up to Win in Life. Okay? And then she will tell you when it's going to air. September 13th, she will be taping. Okay? But just be praying for her and that this will be a door that leads to many other doors. Not only will people buy her books, <clears throat> but people will call her to speak. People will be blessed by her testimony, by whatever she shares that day. Okay? So that day, she will go and tape it, and then we'll let you know when it's going to air. Okay? Okay? Those of you who are in the area who want to go with us, you can. All right? All right. Blessings to you all. Okay? Blessings. We want to rejoice with our sister, Tina Bryant. Yes, I believe she officially moves in today. Am I right, Valerie? Is today the day Tina moves in? Is today the day Tina moves in?
Okay, those of you who want to be a blessing to her, just go to Walmart under the registry. Okay. My wife says she's going on there today. Okay. Valerie, are you still there? Is today the day? I know she was saying Monday, but... Uh, oh, it's Friday. Okay, it's Friday. Okay, Friday is the day. Friday is the day Tina will be officially moving into her new place. Okay? She has a registry on at Walmart. You can go there, put her name in there, Tina Bryant. Okay? If you want to be a blessing to her, go to Walmart. All delays work in her favor. That's right. You got that right. Good. All right. We love you all. We honor you. We celebrate you. My wife says hello to everybody. Yes, CTN, Christian Television Network. Yes, CTN, Christian Television Network. Okay. Continue to pray one for another. Remember, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver you out of them all. You are coming out of this. This is not the end. This is not the end, but the beginning. Uh, it will be at 1 o'clock, but that day will be a taping. She will tape it on the 13th, but we will tell you when it's going to air. It'll probably air like a week or two after. All right? But she's going to tape it and do the interview on the 13th, and then it will air uh probably a week or two after that. All right. All right. Blessings to each one of you. Have a great day.